What is good, LAFC faithful Defenders Nation? We got to do this two more times, folks. It's time for one more sleep. And today, we've got one more person in the studio with Philly. This is awfully exciting, folks. We're bringing in the big guns here as we celebrate the night before the Western Conference Final at BMO. You know him over there next to me on the screen. That's one Christian Philly Philemon. But everybody, the uh, the sultry baritone voice, one half of the call on any Empire Strikers game, and one of the sexiest men that I know, if I may say so myself. It's the good doctor, everybody. Jonathan Reimer from Shoulder to Shoulder. What's good, Los Angeles and the 109 and counting countries, I believe, listening in to hear Defenders of the Bank. Thank you for letting me crash for the very fourth, fifth time. Something Maybe like that. fifth time, but only four of those ever went out to the public, <laughs> I assume. But um, yes, uh, a pleasure to be joining the illustrious confines of none other than Phila Monster Studios here in beautiful Burbank, California, to be joining mi compa Philly and mi amigo El Panda. Ready to roll. Yes. Ready, Ready for yeah. LAFC to roll tomorrow. <laughs> Fresh <laughs> off the... Fresh off the final four for the 3C2A Men and Women State Soccer Championships, Dr. and I, which is what I like to call him on our Empire Strikers broadcast, and the reason why is because my man's got a PhD in personality. That's his name from here on out. I don't give a hoot what anybody says. That's him. I'm Philly. That's Scarf. That's the doctor. It is said. It has been spoken. It is in the ether sphere. We, uh, yeah, we just rolled in from Mount Sac for uh, 3C2A, and for those who don't know, that's... What's the acronym? Uh, that is the California Community College Athletic Association. And when we mean just rolled in, like literally, I haven't even taken my pass off. We walked in the door. I put an LAFC hat on and we clicked record. That's how fresh off the pitch this podcast is coming at you. Yeah, no doubt. And we had a really good time today. Uh, it, it was really sunny. And as you can tell, I got a little bit of sun. Then it got really cold. But we saw some really awesome action. Obviously, we're going up and, uh, you know, becoming the voice of the Inland Empire, as the doctor mentioned. But what was really cool was we saw a lot of players from LAFC at the game, in particular for El Camino. El Camino, as you know, Scarf, is right down the road from you in Torrance, California. And a vast majority of that team, in some way, shape, or form, has trained with LAFC or the Academy. And we got to hang out, chat a little bit with Christian Torres, Tony Leone, Nathan Ordaz was there, Christian uh, Hi uh, Christopher Jaime, uh, several other players from LAFC, too. And uh, yeah, they'll probably be back for the final on Sunday, which means that you better accompany us for that game. Is that is that going to be down in Torrance at El Camino? No, no, it's not. It's going to be at Mount Sac, which no, is still not that far from you. No, it's not that bad. That's for sure. Look, it was really cool to uh, to hear about all the guys that came down. Super excited. But you know what else is really cool? The fact that LAFC is playing in the Western Conference Final, man. It's time for one more sleep. And this is not just any matchup, obviously. This is to go to MLS Cup. But this is a team that has been a thorn in our sides this season. The human highlighters of Houston, led by Ache. Ache, all the alliteration uh, involving H's that you could possibly want on this one more sleep and on the broadcast. Philly, this is a team that beat us 4 nothing in Houston. 4 nothing, And this is a team that we lost at home four days later. one nothing. We've yet to scratch against these guys in the MLS regular season. And they've already got some hardware. Beating the golden boy himself, much to the chagrin of Don Garber. They've already hoisted the U.S. Open Cup over Messi. I mean, a lot to play for for us. But for the Dynamo, this could be the greatest season in club history. I mean, one could argue that they've accomplished something early on in their history that we're dying to do. They went back-to-back -back MLS Cups in 06 and 07. And that's obviously something we're looking to do. They have been a thorn in our side. 2018, they knocked us out of the U.S. Open Cup. They went on to beat the Philadelphia Union to hoist that. And then they go ahead and do it again this year against Messi in Miami. But it's not just that. This is a team that has started to fire on all cylinders. A lot of people thought going into this season that the Ache Ache experiment was dead in the water. By no means is that the case because he leads the team 
team in assists with 17. In fact, it was his dime that led to former LAFC player Franco Escobar scoring the lone goal in the semifinals against Sporting Kansas City, propelling Houston into the position that they're in right now. But this is a team scarf neck and neck with us all season. We finished in third. They finished in fourth. We had 52 points. They had 51. We had 54 goals for. They had 51. We had 39 goals allowed. They had 38. But they did beat us at home. In fact, they were the first team in franchise history to beat LAFC back to back. You said it. They killed us in Houston 4 to nil. Then they turned it around and beat us in BMO 1 to nil. They have only won three games on the road in MLS, and one of them was in our stadium. But I throw all that into the mighty Los Angeles River because none of that ish means a damn thing. We are at home. We are rested. We are on fire. And I hate Fanta. I hate Sunkissed. I hate Orange Juice. I hate Dole Whip. Tomorrow, we put some dynamite into the dynamo and we smoke them much like an 80s kid would smoke a pack of cools. <laughs> yeah, look, this is a team that as good as they have played, and let's not be mistaken, their last 14 regular season matches, they lost one. One in their last 14 regular season matches. We know what they've done in the playoffs because they've gotten to play us here in the Western Conference Final. But let's hold our horses here for a minute. In their last three games, the Houston Dynamo have not scored more than one goal in any of those last three games. And they only won one of those last three games in regulation. They had to go to PKs twice against Real Salt Lake. Now look, they've had a lot of different goal scorers in the month of October and November. You mentioned Franco Escobar. Corey Baird, of all people, has 14 goals and eight assists this season for Houston across all competitions. They've got Ache Ache. They've got Amine Bassi. They've got Glenn Dorsey. They've got Coca Karaskia. They've got Nelson Griffin. Dines. They've got Artur. There's a lot going on with Houston. But over these last couple of weeks, they've just scored one goal a game. And I've got to be honest with you. The way that Maxime Cripo stood on his head last match, the way that Giorgio Chiellini turned up the way back machine and was a force on the back line. And the way that LAFC's team defense, Timothy Tillman, I'm looking at you on the back line, saving a goal. Denny Bawanga, Kike Oliveira racing back to make plays on the defensive end, heading out balls off of corner kicks and set pieces. The way our team defense has been playing over the last month, Dare I say it's going to take a lot more than the one goal that Houston has been averaging in their last three games to beat us. You know, I got to say, history does, let's say it again, it's the motto, a funny tendency to repeat itself. And I'm looking here at what Ruben stated in the chat. Let's just hope history from last season repeats itself this year, beating the Texas team three to nil. Yeah, I mean, it's a storyline. It's a familiar one. We had a tough time with Austin last season. And what do we do with them in the Western Conference Final? We absolutely dispatch them, cutting the head off of broccoli and honestly just killing their ambitions because they were dog shite. Uh, in, yes. Wasn't that the one where you ate like a whole thing of broccoli at one point on the on the course? Well, I mean, the last one of the last pods we did, yeah, I, I was that was my thing. I ate a head of broccoli. I don't have a Fanta can to I was gonna crush. Say, I'll, I'll wait for tomorrow. What are you going to – maybe it's a bag of Cheetos, like orange Cheeto. I'm trying to think of something. Don't, don't I, besmirk Chester. I'm I'm just uh, – Jonathan, what do you got that might be orange that Philly – maybe just a whole orange, like peel and all? I don't know. Uh, there, there's one thing that comes to mind as an Angelino, as a diehard Dodgers fan, when the color orange is brought up. And for that very obvious reason – it's quite simple to hate all things orange and yes. adding Houston to that list. Um, let me remind you the Dodgers fan part. Maybe yeah. you remember the city of Houston, but I have one thing to say to that godforsaken swamp, and that is bang. And tomorrow you'll be banging cans and we'll be banging goals. <laughs> Ooh, I like the motivation. Look, you said it. Like, look, again, statistically, if you look between the, uh, the, the shots, the shots on goal, the passing accuracy, 
Look, let's not kid ourselves. Obviously, we're all excited, motivated. We all believe that LAFC can beat the Houston Dynamo. And why not? Because we're playing in the friendly confines of BMO Stadium. But this is a team that really much is neck and neck with us in a lot of statistical categories. So don't kid yourselves. This is going to be a tough match, despite the fact that we are at home. But where I think that we have a massive advantage is in the fact that this one way or another will be our final home game of 2023. It does not matter who wins between Columbus and Cincinnati. The MLS Cup final will be played in the state of Ohio. And for those of you who haven't been in the state of Ohio, uh, it's actually not that bad. I don't mind Ohio. Doctor has something written. I don't even see what it says. Well, you it guys says, get a lower third, but I don't get a lower third. I'm just trying to be cool like you guys. Oh, That's darn. <laughs> oh, darn. We, we don't have That's, that's comedy at its finest. We, we don't Comedy have to it's funny. Here. That's funny. No, you don't. It's obvious. All right, let, let's get into uh, our players to watch. What do you say, Scarf? Well, real quick, I just want to remind everybody of one thing before we go on. We know that Danny Bawanga is on a crash course with history with 37 goals, knocking on the doorstep one goal away from Carlos Vela, one goal away from tying the Major League Soccer calendar year goal scored record by a single player. But I just want to remind everybody, in LAFC's last six games, we have scored 17 goals. Six games, 17 goals. Granted, 10 of those, 10 goals in six games, have been by Denny Bawanga. But just in case you think we're only Denny Bawanga, Kike Oliveira, Timothy Tillman, Fufu Krastev, Jesus David Murillo, and twice from Ryan Hollingshead have also scored, in addition to us letting one of the other players on the other team score an own goal for us. We got plenty of other options of firepower. And keep in mind, I didn't mention the name Carlos Vela. He has not scored in the last six. He can certainly score from anywhere on the pitch. And I think he's got a little bit more motivation, Philly, with Ache Ache staring at him from across the pitch. Who Ache Ache, by the way, Hector Herrera, has called Carlos Vela the best Mexican player of all time. Into microphones several times. So I'm just saying, everybody is calling for Mario Gonzalez in the chat. I, uh, look, maybe you guys are all just hoping that Mario Alvarado, who's one of our regular members in the chat, has a good day tomorrow, right? You guys can't seriously be talking about Mario Gonzalez. All right, Philly, what do you think? Is it time? Are we, are we doing the players to watch? Well, if I could uh, emulate my inner Bruce Buffer, it's time for our players to watch. <laughs> What's in your drink right now, by the way? Um, tequila. I love it. All right, look, you guys didn't think for the potential last time he's ever playing at BMO Stadium that I am not going to pick the Italian superstar that is Giorgio Chiellini as my player to watch. Are you kidding? If there's one thing that you can peg Scar for, it is a homer like no other for one Giorgio Chiellini. Everybody in the stands at BMO, we're going to go absolutely nuts when Giorgio finds a way to have another goal contribution. We have seen his passing split lines. We have seen him. He was able to score one, but he's been on the doorstep for others. Giorgio Chiellini, I'm, I'm as homery as it gets, you guys. Come at me. I don't care. He is an all-timer, and we get to watch him play in black and gold for at least one more match at BMO Stadium. Giorgio Chiellini is my player to watch, and if you've spent any time listening to Defenders of the Bank in the last year and a half, you know exactly why. However, we're talking about Houston, and a lot of people are going to be looking at players like Amine Bassi and Corey Baird and Ache Ache, and a lot of the, the offensive firepower comes from those guys. But a player who I think creates matchup problems for us is the speed and cutting ability of one Nelson Quinones. Now, I have a feeling Ache Ache is going to work their way in to the next part of what we're doing here. All I will say is this. The guy had 17 assists for a reason this year. And I think Nelson Quinones, if somebody is going to find a gap, a space, I know Corey Baird wants it to be Corey Baird, but sometimes wanting doesn't matter. It won't make it true. And I'm a little worried about Amine Basse, but at the end of the day, I can see a guy like Nelson Quinones getting on the end of one of these passes for Ache Ache and causing trouble for LAFC. So he's my player to watch. 
Well, no one's going to say that, you know, you don't make your attempts to try to win in the fantasy MLS space. I mean, you're always reaching for things, and I certainly appreciate that. And yeah. while you do that, I yeah. have a tendency to, well, paint the obvious. If we're watching an MLS broadcast, you're probably going to focus on at least one of the players I choose. At the very least, one out of the two. My players to watch, Scarf. Corey Baird and the Denny Boanga. The reason why I say Corey Baird, you mentioned Ache Ache, 17 assists. Amin Bassi is the leading scorer on this Houston Dynamo team. They're so talented. Karaskia, Griffin Dorsey, who, by the way, went to my alma mater, Indiana University, which I absolutely love. Not Griffin Dorsey, but Indiana University. The reason, though, Scarf, is why I think Corey Baird is going to be a player to watch is because if you go back to his rookie season in RSL, this is a kid who played with a lot of moxie and with something to prove. When he had something to prove, he went out there and did a lot of really good things for really Salty Lake and obviously got recognized for it. He finds his way over to LAFC, a team that, well, is on the rise at that point. Not a team that's won the MLS Cup, but a team that many players would have a desire to play for. Why? Phenomenal fans. Phenomenal city. Phenomenal everything. You don't have that in Real Salt Lake. But we shipped him off to Houston. Whoa! Relatively quickly. So you would have to imagine that that kind of sparked a little bit of animosity towards him based on what occurred to him. He's found a nice home in Houston. We shipped off another LAFC player, even before Corey Baird, that didn't necessarily acclimate very well with Houston, in that of Christian Ramirez. He did much better in Aberdeen than he did at Houston, and well, with the goal that he had for Columbus, he's probably doing a lot better there with our old buddy Diego Rossi. But if you're Corey Baird, you're going to want to come into BMO Stadium and stick it to Larry and John Thornton for letting him go. He's my player to watch. He is the second leading scorer on this team. He will be dangerous. And of course, Denny Bowanga. Why not? The low-hanging fruit. The arguably best player potentially, to have ever played for LAFC. It's going to be Carlos Vela that's going to have that statue. But Denny Bowanga is utterly impressive. I popping jaw-dropping golazos coming by way of this man. He has done a lot of work for us. And if we are going to look to propel ourselves into the finals, he is going to have to contribute because when he scores, we win. When he's quiet, we don't. What do you think, Doc? Well, like, I, I don't get a fancy graphic that grows yeah. on the screen, um, but I, I do have two players to watch. I'll follow your lead here and start with Houston. Who leads Houston in most tackles, most defensive clearances, and who is going to be the man tasked with defending one Denny Bawanga? It's a name you might recognize, folks, none other than one Franco Escobar, right? That is going to be my player to watch because if he defends Denny, going to be a rough day for LAFC if he like every other defender over the course of this season fails mightily in the task of defending one Denny then it is going to spell a glorious day for the black and gold and now my player to watch for LAFC is one that I am friggin astounded both of you did not pick he <laughs> is by wide margin the greatest player to ever don the black and gold kit in what could also be potentially his last game at our home stadium before his statue goes up, a man who always steps up when there is a big Mexican player to go up against on the other side of the pitch, and that is Carlos freaking Vela. Put some respect on his dang name. I don't have a microphone to drop, or I would have, but... That's well, you got you, you got the applause button. You didn't hear it because I have the headphones <laughs> on, but you got the applause button. <laughs> look, Carlos Vela, look, I, I don't want it to be true, Jonathan. I just don't want it to be true that it's going to be as – if you listen to Ilya, right? Ilya said this week that he thinks Carlos uh, is going to come back. We'll see what happens. Y'all in the chat that are talking about Mario Gonzalez, if Mario Gonzalez is coming off the bench because we need a goal, hold on to your butts. All right. I just don't want that to be the case. All right. Let's get into our keys to the match. I got two for you. Here we go. That's not it. Those are the ones from last game, but that's all right. Crap. Billy, oh, uh, no. I know I cheated. 
<laughs> Hold up, oh, man. I oh. asked Billy. You'll have to forgive record. me. I've been working all freaking week. Scarf, really? I know I changed it. I looked at it and I smiled and I think great minds think alike. This. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, quick change. <laughs> How do I do it? Shoot. That's okay. All right. I'll give you my, my ah. keys to the match. Philly doesn't even have any keys to the match. This is going to be a lot of fun going through these. Uh, they're not. This is what the you ones. get when you get me fresh out of a broadcast, Scarf. This is why we need to hire interns. Do any of the millions. And millions. Want to help defenders of the bank with little things like this? We would greatly appreciate it. We don't make very much money, but we could certainly add you to the family. If there's anybody listening to this that wants to contribute to little things like fixing the graphics or maybe helping out with social media, I, Scarf, Panda would greatly appreciate it. Oh, I think Mina might appreciate it too. I don't know. Uh, so look, the keys to the game that I sent Philly, number one was counter them to death. They are going to want to attack. And the way that LAFC has been playing to, uh, later uh, early, later on in the year, excuse me, is that we have been working our counter game to perfection. That is how we scored our goal with Denny Bawanga in the last match against Seattle. So that being said, is it our 100th pod this year, Ruben asks. Seems that being like said, it. counter them to death. They're pretty good at defending the counter, but no team in Major League Soccer is anywhere close to as clinical, as surgical, and as lethal as LAFC is on the counter. So counter them to death. And my second key to the match is to press Ache Ache. I think that he is better than Ricky Pooch. I don't think he is as dynamic of a player anymore as Ricky Pooch, but I think a player capable of showing you how to play the midfield having an absolute masterclass of a game like Ache Ache, he is going to need to be defended by two players, not at the same time, because I don't think we can double Ache Ache, but two players who are just as capable of that masterclass themselves in Kellen Acosta and in Ilya Sanchez. So if we press Ache Ache, you mentioned it, 17 assists. I think he has 21 assists across all competitions this year. It's just a stupid number for Hector Herrera. We need to have either Ilya Sanchez or Kellen Acosta in his back pocket. We took out Ricky Pooch when we played the Galaxy. We need to take out Ache Ache when we play Houston. And those, despite Philly's best efforts, are my keys to the match. Yeah, I, uh, I'm Philly, sorry, put up Scarf. Yours. I, uh... Put up yours. Put up yours. There they are. <laughs> it worked. It worked. I... I feel like I'm sorry, Scarf. I I'm really sorry. Well, there's only it, one. It kind of guts me because again, like I, I I read this. I have it. I'm staring right at your text. Anyway, look, Houston's offense primarily comes by way of their midfield. Amin Bossi, their leading scorer. Corey Baird, their second leading scorer. Ache Ache, their leading assist man. These are guys that predominantly function in and out of the midfield. They have a phenomenal midfield. And the way this game is going to go is by way of the midfield. Now, I will go out on the limb, and I don't believe that this is a very hot take. Houston's midfield is far better than any midfield that we produce this season. It really is. You could argue piece by piece who might be better, but as a collective whole, the midfield of Houston contributes far more offensively to their attack than our midfield does. And that, to me, I will die on that hill. The key to this game will be to win in the midfield. Houston's a team that many pundits believe will retain the lion's share of possession. But then you have the counter argument, which states that this is a team that can beat you on the counter. I don't know what it's going to be. You're going to hold the ball or you're going to wait for us to make a mistake. I don't know. But for me, the solution for all of that gibberish is to just win the damn midfield. So at that point, it's up to Ilya Sanchez, Timothy, Timothy Tillman, Kellen Acosta, or Mati Bogush, whoever Steve inserts in that he believes that is going to be, that's going to give us the best opportunity to win. They need to win in the midfield. If we can't control those three that I just mentioned, then this is going to be a very tough game. We win in the midfield. It is no question that we're going to hoist a trophy on Sunday. Jonathan, curious, buddy. If you've got a key to the match, what's your key to the match? 
You know, typically my litmus test for LAFC is based on the passing of Ilya Sanchez. I, I think that's typically a really good indicator of how the game is going for the black and gold. If Ilya Sanchez is breaking one to two lines with passes, if he's completing passes more than seven yards forward, LAFC is going to win the game. If Ilya Sanchez is really struggling to maintain possession, he's constantly having to cycle the ball backwards or sideways, and he's not getting the ball forward. If on those contested aerial midfield balls, he's not finding possession and regaining possession for LAFC, then it's going to be a really tough day. But when he's stepping into passing lanes, causing those quick turns and able to get that quick counter press back into you know, uh, some movement going offensively the other direction, it typically spells a really good game for LAFC. Uh, games where we haven't been able to play through the midfield, as Philly has already alluded to, games where we've tried to root one over the top have just been vastly less successful for this franchise. Yeah, I think we definitely have tried less of the over-the-top ball over the last couple of weeks, too. I think we're working more towards the sides. We're working with, obviously, uh, we've got Cheeky and we've got Ryan Hollingshead on the wings there who are helping to bring the ball down as well. I think that's really helpful. Uh, I, the over-the-top ball just has never worked for LAFC. That's not who we are. That's who Carson was when they had Zlatan, and we saw the success that, that that did not bring them as well. You're absolutely right. Let's get into our score prediction. Well, I would just, I would just add really quick. Yeah. If you go back and you look at LAFC's two losses versus Houston this year, uh, it, it is 100% exactly how it played out in both those games. LAFC just tried to go over the top and it didn't yeah. work. So you, you can't, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And yet still we podcast, but nonetheless. <laughs> um, oh, you set me up for that. I, I don't know if I like you right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ilya Sanchez, can, can he shuttle? Let's Let's talk about our score predictions. I'm putting Jack Dickens all the way from London. His score prediction up there because Philly, let's see if Philly put my score prediction up there. I'm holding my breath. Hey, there it is. Jack, all the way out there in, in London. In reality, it was the score prediction last week. Was, was it also 3 1? It was also 3 1 last week. No, it was 3 2. I thought it was last week. I don't remember. Either way. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm no, just Philly laughing at myself. No, Philly has no idea what's coming up next for his score prediction, by the way. But you guys will see, <laughs> as always, he gets the cool sideways sliding score graphics. So this will be a lot of fun. This is like Russian. Credit Panda for that. I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> I know. But that's uh, mine. I'm comes the Tyrion Lannister of sports media scarf. I'm just drinking no things. <laughs> mine, uh, mine comes straight up. Philly has this cool. Uh, there's this cool little graphic going on. I love it. 3-1. Here's why. We're going to get the first one. And, Philly, what's our record this season when we score first? We rarely, if ever, lose when That's we right. score first. Sans dumb teams like Monterey. Yeah, we're like 21-1-6 and six or whatever when we score first this 21, season. 21-0-1. Oh, and one. I, oh, geez. Yes, yeah, somewhere along those lines. Yeah. I used to have that stat. We, we've won 21 games when we score first. We've only won 27 games all year or something like that. So, look, here's the deal. We're going to score first, and then that puts all of Houston's best laid plans of mice and men out the window. Huh. I cannot wait to see LAFC get an early one, and I'm talking early, 15, 20 minutes in. We're getting an early one. Check Scar off getting jealous. <laughs> Daniel, you that might be the comment. Wait, where'd it go? Daniel oh. Woods, I love it. Uh, Jack Dickens is saying Carlos Vela is gonna score. Jonathan Reimer says put some respect on the man's name. So uh, why not? Let's get Carlos a goal. Let's get Carlos to get the first one. Land right as he scores it, just look right at Ache Ache and go, all right, game on. Let's go. What are we gonna do? I've got three one. Let's see if Philly has is this, does he have one nothing from last week or is it a new one nothing score? Let's see. No, I honestly believe the same darn thing. These teams, look, Houston's let in less goals than we've let, let in. And I won. It's going to be, dude, it's going to be Denny Bawanga. I'm sorry. In no way you convince me that any other LAFC player is going to score the goal. My heart, my heart would love to tell me that Carlos Vela is going to get the final goal of LAFC's season in 2023. And. I just, I just don't. I just don't know. I. It's going to be Denny Bawanga. I would love for it to be Carlos Vela. Quite honestly, I would prefer that it was just ten nil and that we could just like sleep after halftime. 
the anxiety that we are all going to have going into BMO Stadium is going to be quite wild. We should not walk in there feeling arrogant, cocky, and overconfident because we know how that works. You and I learned a very valuable lesson in 2018 where we failed LAFC and ourselves for that matter is in 2018 at halftime of the game against Real Salt Lake. You and I, my friend, I remember it exactly where we were situated. We're already looking to book our flights to see uh, to Seattle. What ended up happening was we got cry locked. And that's what happens when you get overconfident and over cocky. I'm not going to go into that this way. No way. I'm a Mets fan. I know better. You're a Mets fan. You know better. But either way, I don't believe that this is going to be a high-scoring game. I'm going to stick to the same exact scoring line that I predicted last week for uh, the game against the Seattle Sounders. We are going to win. We are going to go. We're going to score first, but it's going to end one nil. I love the chat, by the way. And and Jonathan, we'll get to your score prediction in just a second. I just want to mention everybody in the chat to the millions out there. And millions. <laughs> a little, you know, we, not exactly, so you know, like, appreciate. You know, exciting, but okay. We, we so appreciate how active the chat is between Mendo and Jack and Ruben, Daniel and Mario and Alberto. We love y'all. Y'all flipping rock. David. Shouts to Smalls Kenobi. Absolutely. Smalls Kenobi in the building. Oliver, everybody who's in the chat tonight, you guys have been lighting it up. We so appreciate you. I love the idea of Denny Bawanga earning a penalty and somehow giving it to Carlos Vela. That better not happen. Did we just lose Philly? We might have lost Philly for a second, but that's okay because it's time for score prediction with the doctor. Jonathan Reimer, shoulder to shoulder, your score prediction for the MLS Cup Western Conference Final, sir. I am going to split the difference betwixt the two of you. Hmm. I think LAFC is going to score the first goal of the game. I think LAFC is going to score the second goal of the game. And then we get into that glorious position of a team being up two goals, which, as you know, Scarf, and I'm sure you buy into this theory, this is, of course, so the much. most precarious lead in all of soccer. <laughs> and the pundits will, of course, be talking about it, at which point in time, LAFC will take a foot off the gas looking forward to that trip to Ohio. Houston is going to find the back of the net to make it 2-1, and we are all going to be clenched sphincters for the last <laughs> 10 minutes of the game before that glorious, glorious orgasmic moment of release that the final whistle shall bring to all of us, and we shall bathe in those glorious beer showers, and in the name of Carlos, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. That might I, be the most beautiful thing I've heard in a very long time, by the way. The uh, the chat is asking... Will Denny Bowanga break Carlos Vela's record? I'm saying it right now. He is not yes. going to break Carlos Vela's record this game. This game. He's not going to break it this game because we have one more match to play. And for the only time in my life, I am going to say something. I can't wait to book a trip to Ohio in December. <laughs> Let's... Go, people. All right, I'm going to say this. Having gone to college in the Midwest, there's been a lot of, like, redneck commentary about the state of Ohio. I don't have affiliations to Ohio. I'm not from the Midwest. I'm a kid from a small town in New York called Queens. You did marry someone from the Midwest. Yeah, but she's so. not from Ohio. She was born in Kentucky, raised in Indiana. But here's my thought. Look, whether it be Cincinnati or whether it be Columbus, those are two fine cities. The best steak dinner I ever had in my life was not in Austin, was not in Kansas City. Honestly, it was in Columbus. Panda was right there with me. I was on a business trip with a previous firm that I worked for, one tiny little firm you might have heard of called J.P. Morgan. It was one of the greatest steak dinners ever. Columbus is a fine town. Cincinnati is a fine town. It's not this derelict wasteland in the midwest that most people think about but alas we're going to the finals and and that's the end of that hold on hold on what was the cut how was it prepared you can't just leave us dangling that you had the greatest steak ever and you're not even going to tell us what steak you had there is no point in me telling you any of that because i don't know where we're going if the crew win i'll tell you on the next pod if cincinnati wins i will tell you that skyline chili might be overrated but it's something you gotta do when people from the Northeast think of like 
fast food franchise joints in LA, they think of in and out. You got to do in and out. When you go to Cincinnati, you got to have Skyline Chili. It is what it is. I would just like to point out that according to the... That's uh, damn funny, by the way, soccer. You would say. <laughs> I would like to point out that according to the Apple weather app, on Saturday, next Saturday, it's supposed to rain in Cincinnati, Ohio for the <laughs> final. <laughs> right, so not- look, this, this is my opportunity to completely take over and derail your show here real quick because oh. uh, you've invited me in and that's what you get, right? Yeah. So I, I want your picks for the East. Hold up, Scar first. Oh, because yeah. Because you're as unprepared. And Philly, you you can go next because you're you're more unprepared for this question. Yeah. So, Scar, well, go look, ahead. It's, it's an easy one for me. It's an easy one for me. I want to play Diego Rossi. I want to play Christian Ramirez. I want to bring on those boys. And look, I want to give one more satisfaction to all those fans in Columbus that save the crew and stick it to the pre-court family while they have to watch Austin at home doing absolutely nothing. I can't wait for it to be Columbus. I want it to be Columbus for none other reason than under my breath in the 11th minute while I'm there at, I don't know what it's called, like lower.com field or whatever. I'm going to go, they scored the first goal against the Sounders because I'll be watching Diego Rossi (laughs) and loving him with a little bit of my heart while we beat Columbus for the MLS Cup. It's it's so funny. I I actually had this vision of him, you know, accidentally scoring an own goal and the (laughs) – (laughs) <laughs> fervent 32 52 away support that will be there singing the Diego Rossi scored the first goal in honor of him scoring an own goal. So I'll root with you for that one, Philly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just do this together. Diego Rossi. Diego Rossi. Oh, Diego Rossi. Oh, Diego Rossi. He scored the first goal against the Sounders. How did we get here? He scored the first goal against the Sounders, Diego Rossi. That was I fun. It. I love that chant, by the way. I mean, if you go to a lot of games in England, they'll just start busting out chants for random things that happened with random players 20 years ago. I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't continue to bring that in because that really was the goal that set this camp on fire. Anyways, that being said, if we're going to be asked, you said you wanted the Columbus crew. I'll tell you this, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! Col- hi, hi, Isis. Oh, Thanks for the haircut. Appreciate you. Isis, he loved your haircut so much you put on a hat. Me, on the other hand, I don't have a hat on because I love you more. Oh. I was wearing oh. a beanie because it oh. was like 40 degrees where we were sitting you know, out in Matt Sack College on on a soccer field. I would just like hours. to say the rails are over here, and our pod. Yeah, is yeah, all right, all right. All so right look, I want FC Cincinnati for two reasons. For two reasons in particular. One, one of my dearest friends in the whole wide world, and I know you listen to the show fairly frequently. You've been one of my biggest fans ever since you and I met over a decade ago. My beloved friend Sean Murphy was with FC Cincinnati from the very beginning. I remember I brought him to Bank of California Stadium in 2018 for that infamous game that Andre Horta gave up the goal in which the Galaxy came into our home and drew it. Sean Murphy is a huge FC Cincinnati fan, and I love this kid more so than I love anybody in my life. But that being said, that would be reason number one. Reason number two, Scarf, I love you too, obviously. That's not even a freaking question. Reimer as well. Uh, I just happen to know Murphy a lot longer because neither of us have gone to college together. Anyways, FC Cincinnati also happens to be the Supporters' Shield winner. And so for me, if they're going to take something away from us, which was that Supporters' Shield, well, then we got to stick it to them. And to me, there's nothing better than to meet the team that took our Shield in the final. We stick it to them, and we hoist our second consecutive MLS Cup in their home. I don't have a problem against the Columbus crew. They don't really mean a damn thing to me. Yeah, it'd be cool to see Diego Rossi and Christian Ramirez, but none of that ish matters. To be the man, you got to beat the man. FC Cincinnati is the man. Lucho Acosta is the MVP. We need to show everybody why Denny Bowanga is the MVP. 
I, I would just like to point out, Daniel Angel asks, if you love Sean Murphy more than anybody ever, what about Panda? I'm talking about, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, I love my wife. She, Panda's at a ho holiday party. She's going to have no <laughs> idea what he said right now. He's in the clear, so don't even worry. Look, Mario had it right here, yo. Romance is always stronger than romance. I Look, I love my friends. My friends, my homies, they're my family. You met Sean Murphy, Scarf. Doctor, you met Sean Murphy. You know this kid means the world to me. He's I don't have I don't have much family, but obviously he's one that falls into the line. So for me, sleep with one eye open. <laughs> if there's anybody that can make me disappear better than anybody else on the planet, it's Panda. 15 years in the army, she watches murder docs all the time. If I disappear, she's your suspect, though. He's not wrong. Uh, I would like to point out that we have never gone 40 minutes on one more sleep. For all of you traveling to the game that don't get to this point, you're not going to miss about on anything uh, tactical, anything critical to the game at all. This has just been fun. We're having a good time. Soccer USA wonders where the Roldans are watching the game tomorrow, probably in their uh, in their homes. The in, golf uh, course. The go yeah, right? So, look, this is going to be a lot of fun because tomorrow we get to celebrate going to MLS Cup. We get to book our flights to Ohio. Woo! I can't wait. <laughs> We're I'm the Manchester United football support team from Ohio. <laughs> that's, a, that's a shout out to the movie Euro Trip. Sorry. I've got 3 1. Philly's got 1 0. The good doctor, I believe, had 2 1. Splitting the difference. I love it. This has been a lot of fun. Jonathan Reimer joining us here on our final one more sleep of the Western Conference. It's been a long year, folks. But in just 90 minutes, we will get to finally play for that fourth trophy that we've had the opportunity to win. And this one we're taking all the way home. We got to bring it back from Ohio to get it. We got Houston tomorrow, folks. It's one more sleep. It's Defenders of the Bank. And we have cool outro music. Wait, before that, I'm sorry, Scarf. I'm sorry, Don't Scarf. Cool. I just want to say this at least one more time, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. I was reminded by a great group of young kids. And I was reminded by a phenomenal couple. And I don't know if I'm supposed to say y'all's names, but I have it here on this amazing homemade thermos. I want to remind everybody that we are the trailblazing, MLS Cup raising, always competing, Houston Dynamo beating, goal scoring, rip roaring, styling and smiling, black and gold wearing, keep on swearing on us because we, ooh, keep on swearing because you hate, oh geez, I messed that up. Champions of MLS, and don't you forget it. Oh, by the way, I totally screwed that up, and I hate myself for it. But this right here, we're the champs. The champs are here. Don't you forget it. Anybody out there watching this from Houston that thinks you guys are going to come in and ruin our parade, F off. You know how people in Los Angeles feel about people from Houston. Y'all are a bunch of cheaters. And even though the Dodgers weren't able to bury y'all in the World Series, we're going to bury you tomorrow night. LAFC destroys the Dynamo. We hoist a Western Conference trophy. And I don't give a hoot if it's Columbus or Cincinnati. We are going back to back. And that's the bottom line because Philly 316 said so. I didn't break it. I swear to God. I now, love that thermos. Now can we play outro music? We can. Okay, bye. Good night, bye. everyone.